Newsy National Correspondent Clayton Sandell got the exclusive chance to speak with some of the people who make the magic happen about their experiences. Clayton, where did this story take you? Hey, Christian, I want to welcome you to the fabled Skywalker Ranch. This is, of course, the famous filmmaker's retreat that George Lucas established after the success of Star Wars. And Newsy is the only network here, and we're talking to a few legends of modern movie special effects. People who worked not just on Star Wars, but on hundreds of other movies. They are here to talk about a new Disney Plus series called Light and Magic. Visual effects create the magic that makes people want to go to the movies. It's the story of the cutting edge special effects company almost as famous as the movies it helps make. Industrial Light and Magic, or ILM, was founded by George Lucas in 1975. When I was writing Star Wars, there were no special effects houses in the world. So how are we going to do the effects? I realized that I was going to have to start a company. A new six-part Disney Plus series pulls back the curtain on the people and the inventions that helped ILM transform movie making. We were departing from convention. We had to build equipment from scratch. This was a long shot. Light and Magic is directed by Larry Kasdan, a longtime screenwriter with credits including The Empire Strikes Back. What a lot of these people share and what the company shares is this ethos. You will run into problems, but we know we're going to solve them. We don't yet have the tool to do this new thing, but we will not give up until we do it. Stop motion animator Phil Tippett helped Lucas fill the galaxy with strange new creatures. So I spent a day just drawing like really quickly. It could be this, could be that, it could be this, could be that, it could be this, could be that and sent it to George and he picked one. I think it'll be all right because it's, it's superimposed. There's snow blowing in front of it and all kinds of stuff. Joe Johnston was there in ILM's early days too, designing many now iconic characters and ships. There you are. Look at that hair. <laughs> I didn't particularly know what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people really didn't know what they were doing. They were, we made a lot of mistakes and we had a lot of failures and we, but we had a lot of successes and we, we sort of learned how to do it. George really gave us, and I think particularly me, he gave me a lot of freedom to design this stuff and to experiment and see what worked. Johnston went on to direct his own films, including Marvel's first Captain America movie. Recently, Johnston and a few former colleagues reunited at Skywalker Ranch, the pastoral filmmaker's retreat George Lucas built in the hills of Marin County, California, near San Francisco. Do you remember the first time you came here? I do. What was it like? There was nothing here. I mean, literally nothing here. The director just bought the land, and we had a we had a picnic. I think there was only like 15 of us. Today, the Victorian house where Lucas keeps offices and a research library overlooks Lake Ewok. There's goats, chickens, even a dedicated fire department. Vineyards produce a Skywalker brand wine, but what looks like an 1880s winery is actually full of state-of-the-art sound editing rooms, recording studios, and a theater. I first came out here with a gang uh, led by George Lucas in uh, 1978. For decades, it's been the professional home of Academy Award-winning sound designer Ben Burt. We had a shooting range right in this area where we are, where we did all the guns for Raiders of the Lost Ark, all the machine guns, really, all right the here. Right thing with bullet ricochets up the hill. And the countless sounds recorded at Skywalker Ranch help complete the illusions created by ILM. The opening of the first Star Wars movie, people they thought it came out fine, and that was you know we were excited to see it. But once the sound was put in for that shot, with all the lasers flying, it just elevates it to something quite different. And that that's the magic of sound, which is it it brings to life the visuals. ILM was always evolving, but nothing disrupted the company culture more than the arrival of computer graphics. Well, what was cool about ILM was that they were just trying to get the image on the screen. They were neutral about this stuff because we weren't good enough, but when we started to be good enough, they were open to it. But others, especially in the ILM model shop, felt threatened. Not everybody was happy about the digital revolution. No. <laughs> I would say 
most of us were not, that were not part of it. it. It was really difficult. That was really difficult. Model maker John Goodson successfully made the switch from plastic to pixels. Well, I always say that visual effects were visual liars. And if we've done our job well, you don't realize you've been lied to. And that's kind of the trick, you know, it's to convince you something is real that doesn't exist. Doug Chang joined ILM in 1989. I kind of grew up um, idolizing all these guys. Now Lucasfilm's executive creative director, he says despite growing to thousands of employees in five countries, the ILM DNA is still intact. The way I look at it is like the old school of ILM magnified by 10, but all the inherent qualities that makes ILM is still there. It's the people, it's the family. Over nearly 50 years, much of ILM's story has been told, but at Skywalker Ranch, Joe Johnston says there are still a few secrets literally buried away. Has anyone told you about the uh, time capsule? No. In the foundation of the main house, there's a time capsule. Do you remember what's in it? Oh, all kinds of great stuff. There's a there's one of my sketchbooks in it. Really? Yeah. Oh wow. Uh -huh. And a, a bunch of other things, including a one dollar bill that I wrote a message on. And you'll have to wait till they. You're not gonna tell us what the message was. <laughs> no, you have to wait. A little. That's what time capsules are all about. Light and Magic is its own time capsule. Movies are special effects. A love letter to an origin story of innovation and creativity. It was just a really special time that I don't think could ever be repeated. I mean, that experience of bringing these people together who, a lot of people who've never worked on, on films before. All six episodes of Light and Magic have now dropped on Disney Plus, and if you're a Star Wars nut like me, you will binge all six episodes in a row and go back and, I admit, binge them again.